A reading from the book of Genesis. Israel loved Joseph best of all his sons, for he was a child of his old age. And he had made him a long tunic. When his brothers saw that their father loved him best of all his sons, they hated him so much that they would not even greet him. One day, when his brothers had gone to pasture their father's flock at Shechem, Israel said to Joseph, Your brothers, you know, are tending our flocks at Shechem. Get ready, I will send you to them. So Joseph went after his brothers and caught up with them at Dotham. They noticed him from a distance, and before he came up to them, they plotted to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes that master dreamer. Come on, let us kill him and throw him into one of the cisterns here. We could say that a wild beast devoured him. We shall then see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to save him from their hands, saying, We must not take his life. Instead of shedding blood, he continued, Just throw him into the cistern there in the desert, but do not kill him outright. His purpose was to rescue him from their hands and return him to his father. So when Joseph came up to them, they stripped him of the long tunic he had on, and then they took him and threw him into the cistern, which was empty and dry. Then they sat down to their meal. Looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, their camels laden with gum, bomb, ribbon, to be taken down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what is there to be gained by killing our brother and concealing his blood? Rather, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, instead of doing away with him ourselves. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh. His brothers agreed. They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. The word of the Lord. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Till his prediction came to pass, and the word of the Lord proved him true. Yeah. Remember the Lord, the Lord The king sent and released him, the ruler of the <coughs> set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions. Remember yeah. the Lord, the Lord, the Lord <coughs> Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, word of God. Therefore, I say to you, 
The kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. When the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they knew that he was speaking about them. And although they were attempting to arrest him, they feared the crowds, for they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. There's a story about Mother Teresa when a group of European theologians once visited her in Calcutta to see more about her work and how she was doing it and so forth and so on. She said to them, what you try to do, what I am trying to do, then you will be able to understand and find joy in the work we do here. So she took them out to one of the child care centers and picked up a child who was playing in the mud and gave her a kiss. She waited for a guest to do the same. None of those learned theologians did anything. And maybe, like these theologians, we often reduce faith to an intellectual exercise, a system of beliefs that help us sort out the complexities of this world. Or we compartmentalize our faith into a fixed time and place on Sunday. A litany of prayers may be said at a particular hour, in a particular way. A set of traditions and customs that we meticulously observe. That's all well and good. But in today's parable, Jesus calls us to translate our faith from intellect to reality. From words to actions. Christ calls us to embrace a faith that is engaged in the grip of our everyday lives. A faith that compels us to translate the words and rituals of our faith into deliberate acts of kindness, compassion, and justice. The gift of faith is like the vineyard in today's gospel. It is given to us to plant and grow and harvest in a wonderful and exciting ways. To let our faith lie fallow is to waste God's life-giving giving. We don't own this vineyard. God has planted it. And he leases it to each one of us as to share and work a harvest for our benefit and for our families. So today's gospel challenges us, this led to recognize all the good things given to us by a loving God. Who gives them not because of anything we have done to merit, and to realize our responsibility to care for those who come after us. So during these days of Lent, and especially in these days of fear and anxiety because of the virus, may we develop a new perspective on the unity of this world we live in, and the approach all the blessings of this earth in a spirit of gratitude and generosity. Uh -huh.